I recently read an article written by a retired battalion chief saying that we need to stop training firefighters like they're becoming Marines. And I'll do an entire response video to that actual article because I personally thought it was a terrible article and based on a terrible premise. But the point still remains that the way that we train firefighters is important. So what I want to do in this video is compare footage from actual Marine Corps boot camp to my experiences in the fire academy. Now, I understand that everybody's fire academy is going to be a little bit different. You're going to have different instructors. You're going to have possibly different standards, depending on what state you're in and the number of hours that are required and the different training that you'll have to go through. You're going to have different characters in your academy class. Things are going to be slightly different depending on where you go, but a lot of the same principles will still apply. So in this video, I'm going to be going over business insiders, what new Marine Corps recruits go through in boot camp. I'm going to be responding to that video and comparing and contrasting what you can expect in the fire academy. Let's get started. Paris Island, South Carolina. Before they become United States Marines, all recruits have to graduate from the Marine Corps' 13-week basic training program, which tests them physically and psychologically. So that's one thing that is similar. I guess it depends on where you go. In the state that I live, uh, it used to be 240 hours. It used to be called your 240 to get your Firefighter 2 certification. I think they have since upped it to 260. Maybe they've even changed it again. I don't I don't exactly know. It was years ago that I went through the academy. Um, but my academy was about 12 or 13 weeks, if I remember right. Depending on where you do it, it might be a little bit longer. It might be a little bit shorter. Uh, where I live and work, a lot of people go to, there's a local community college which has a fire academy. And you can do a semester-long one or you can do a shortened one. I believe I did the shortened one and it was about 12 or 13 weeks. The other thing that I noticed right off the bat that's different, and I actually get questions from people about this quite a bit, is do you have to shave your head? Is it like this? No, I've never heard of a fire academy that makes everybody come in and shave their head all the same. Now, there might be fire academies out there for, for example, if you live in a big city, Los Angeles or, or Houston or whatever, they might make all their recruits come in and do something like that on the first day. I've never heard of it. If you have been to an academy like that or you know of an academy like that, leave it in the comments below so that people that watch this video in the future or maybe scroll through and read this can know what to expect if that's the, the academy they're going to be going to. The other thing is, is if you are a aspiring firefighter, a future firefighter, and you're not sure what to expect in the fire academy, I did an entire video on this. You can I'll put it up here. You can check that out some other time and kind of get an idea of what to expect academically as well as physically and what you'll what you'll be experiencing once you're in the fire academy. Let's keep going. No, I feel sorry for you. Okay. It's a pressure cooker for 12 weeks. Under the pressure of an intimidating drill instructor, someone that's putting you under the scrutiny of attention to detail every single day. And to a certain degree, everything you do is never going to be good enough. Everything at boot camp sucks. It's going to hurt, it's going to be painful, but it's only going to hurt more if you look at it that way. So she's 100% right about that. Whether you're in boot camp, and I've never been in the military, so I've never gone through any military boot camp, but in the fire academy, there's going to be things that are going to be difficult that make you uncomfortable. You're not going to like them. A lot of it comes down to what's your mindset. Um, if you think it's going to be terrible and you're dreading it, it's probably going to be 10 times worse. If you're prepared for it and you have a good mindset and look at this as a learning opportunity, things are going to be much easier for you. So certainly take away from that. Your mindset means a lot, not just in, in the fire academy, but certainly in life. It's boot camp and it's supposed to prepare you for the challenges that lie beyond. We spent five days at Paris Island where we saw different companies at various stages of training. You will not run, you will walk, get on the yellow footprints right now. Right, you will do what you're told to do, what you're told to do it, and without question, do you understand? Yes, sir! On day one of boot camp, new recruits arrive at the receiving barracks, where they take their first steps toward becoming Marines by walking through these silver hatches, symbolizing the threshold between the outside world and Paris Island. You walk through these silver hatches once and never again, do you understand? Oh, yes, sir. Once inside, recruits are processed 
and assign to their platoons. After graduation, Marines commit to a minimum of four years of service. So that's something that is fairly similar. There is an uh, onboarding or indoctrination process on your first day between getting your books and all your academic stuff sorted out. You'll have to get all your gear sorted out, get fitted for different things. Obviously, it's important that your gear fits properly if you're going to be going into a fire or a hot environment. Um, and no matter where you are, I'm sure it's a mess. Whenever you have 20, 30, 40, or even bigger groups of people that you're trying to process in and get them fitted for stuff, it's always a cluster. So uh, my onboarding process was not nearly like this, where someone's screaming at you because your hair's out of place, but um, they they do expect you to move with pace. They do expect you to pay attention. You might get yelled at if you're slacking or you're just kind of dozing off. Um, but there will certainly be an onboarding process. Another thing that they do a lot of times, and I've seen other videos of uh, the beginnings of different fire academies where they'll have an ax or they'll have a shield or they'll have something like that where they'll kind of explain some of the tradition and the history behind the fire service and the importance of what you're getting ready to undertake. I'm, I would imagine it's probably similar in the Marine Corps. You know, he was saying you walk through these doors. Uh, it's something similar. It's again, it's not as dramatic in the fire academy where you're going to be walking through doors or anything like that. Maybe some fire academy out there you will, uh, but there will be part of that explaining the tradition and the honor of what you're undertaking uh, when you're new at the academy. Upon entering the corps, an entry level private will earn around twenty thousand dollars a year. Yes, sir. Recruits are required to make a phone call to a family member or their recruiter to let them know they've arrived. This is Recruit Hatcher. I've been on that stage that parasite. Please do not send any food and bulky items. They're only allowed to read the script printed for them inside the phone bank. I'll contact you in seven to nine days by letter with my new address. Thank you for your support. Goodbye for now. Yes, sir. Get in the class. Hey, sir. Recruits are given three chances to get someone on the line. Sir, my recruit's not answering, sir. Call him again. Not every recruit is able to make a connection. If there is no answer, hang it up and close it. All right, sir. But they won't have long to dwell on it. So that's a question I get a lot that people will ask me is when they're going into the academy, if they're going to be expected to live there, kind of like this, where there's a barracks and there's bunks and that's what you do for three or four months. All the academies that I've ever heard of are not like that. Uh, you show up in the morning, you do your training, you do your classroom and you leave at night and you come back the next morning, just like any other uh, training or class that you go to. Now, I'm sure at some city or major department, they might do things differently and maybe in other countries they do it differently though. Um, if you are aware of an academy that does do it like that, please leave it in the comments below so that people that, again, might go to that academy in the future know what to expect. But I've never heard of that. Um, you show up in the morning, you do your thing, and then you leave at night. You know, you're not, you're not barred from talking to people. I mean, you can still go out and do whatever you do, talk on the phone. Uh, obviously not while you're in training, but outside of that. Outside of your training time, your time's yours normally. The Marine Corps Recruit Depot in Paris Island sits on 8,000 acres of the South Carolina Low Country. It's one of two enlisted recruit depots in the United States. The other is in San Diego, where only male recruits are trained. Around 20,000 recruits graduate from Paris Island every year before joining the more than 180,000 Marines actively serving today. We take young men and women from all walks of life, all cultures. Maybe they were rich, maybe they were poor. They've got different religious backgrounds. They are the melting pot of America. And they come here with one common goal, and that's to be a United States Marine. Paris Island, South Carolina. Here, everyday Americans become Marines, the toughest fighting men in the world. Male recruits have been trained at Paris Island since 1915. Female recruits began to train there in 1949. Today, females comprise under 25% of recruits at Paris Island. Yes, sir. 
and approximately 8% of the United States Marine Corps. So that's something that's different from the fire academy I went to and most I've ever heard. There are not segregated groups, uh, male and female. As far as I'm aware, uh, all male and female cadets in the fire academy will train together simply because when you're in a fire or you're assigned to a, a station or a house, your crew, you might have women and men uh, uh, working together. And so you're going to need to learn how to fight fires with men and women. Um, it's interesting that they said only 8% of, uh, are, of Marines are females. Uh, I'd be interested to find out how many, what percentage of the fire service is female. I actually have no idea. Obviously, it's, ma it's a male-dominated profession. But I would be interested to find that out. Um, but yeah, you're not going to have segregated or separated uh, uh, training groups or battalions, whatever you want to call that. Uh, what they will do, at least that where they did in mine, I think my class had maybe 30 people in it. They split us into seven or eight different groups. Um, and that's who you trained with throughout the entire fire academy. But they were mixed gender. Um, so that's something you can expect in the fire academy as well the lowest percentage of any United States military branch. A recruit's day begins before the sun comes up. Their typical wake-up call is 0400 or 4 a.m. Recruits endure an intense series of physical challenges. 4-3, am I hearing that right? 4-3, yes sir. Fail. Some recruits arrive in better shape than others. Some never did anything more than sit on a couch, you know, as a couch potato. And some may have been collegiate athletes. So there's a vast spread of what their athletic fitness and ability is. I said. So that is spot on. When you show up at the fire academy, you will see some people that are big, strong, fit, athletic, and then you will see some slobs and you will see everything in between. If you are thinking about going to the fire academy, I cannot highly recommend enough that you make sure you take some time to get in shape. Uh, it will make things much more enjoyable for you. It will make things much easier for you. If you've never fought a fire before and you've never put on turnout gear and tried to go on air and breathe down a bottle, um, it's much more difficult than it looks. When I, I remember when I first joined the fire academy, I thought that it wasn't going to be that big of a deal. How hard could this actually be? And then I was shocked to find out how hard it actually is to do all of that activity with all that gear on and especially uh, going, on air, going on air. So I highly recommend you get in shape. And if you are getting ready to get in shape or thinking about getting in shape to prepare for the fire academy, I partnered with Firefighter Furnace. I'll put the link down in the description below. Donnie is actually a firefighter who creates workout programs for the type of fitness that you'll need and as a firefighter in the future. So check that out below. It's Firefighter Furnace. Um, but yeah, make sure you are in shape and make sure you are ready to go before you start the fire academy. It will make your life much, much easier. Much of their training happens here in Leatherneck Square, where a series of intimidating obstacles comprise the confidence course. So I'm not aware of any sort of confidence training in any fire academy, but you will be required to do individual skills that you, you're going to have to learn these and you're going to have to do them well. Um, and some instructors are going to come down hard on you and they should come down hard on you. These are skills and things that you need to be able to do, not only to keep yourself safe and keep yourself alive, but keep other people safe and keep other people alive. So I know some people have a problem with instructors coming down on people like this. I personally think it's a good thing. Uh, uh, recruits, whether you be in, in, in the military or whether you be a future firefighter, you need to be held to a certain standard and you need to make sure that you can do these things. I, you know, I don't know what this was that this particular guy was trying to do. Maybe it was a pull up or, or climb over something. I don't know. Uh, but if you can't do something as simple as that, um, you're going to be in trouble and you're going to hurt other people if you get passed along. The fire academy will weed those people out. That's what it's designed to do. 
starts out in a crawl, walk, run approach throughout training. 99.9% .9 of those that get here and complete all those requirements at the end of training, regardless of how they started. Hey, Sanchez, go Slippy, back. Please, please help. I don't want to do this. I don't No, I'm not. Please. Any recruit with a fear of heights gets the chance to conquer that fear, courtesy of this 47-foot tall tower. Recruits must rappel down using two different methods. For me, the rappel tower was hard because I sort of had a fear of heights. Grab a little my right hand with your right hand. You have to trust the road. So there's nothing to be worried about. You'll be safe all the time. Can you please help me? I'm trying to help you. So I don't want to go down. Recruits with a phobia of heights have little choice but to face their fear. All right, so let's talk about fears for a second. This freaks a lot of people out when it comes to the fire academy. Um, when the fire academy that I went through, we did have to repel. We had an entire repelling class. You have to learn a lot of ropes and knots while you're in the academy. So that is realistic. I can't speak for every fire academy out there if they all make you repel, but I know in mine they did. Um, some people do not like that. They do have a fear of heights. And I've read some of the comments on this video and some people thought it was mean or cruel that they made this person push through their fears and do this. You need to be able to push through your fears, uh, especially talking as, as a fire. I, again, I can't speak as a, as a military member. I was never a member of the military. But as a firefighter, there's going to be things that are uncomfortable or that might freak you out. And you need to be able to maintain your composure. In my fire academy, that we uh, claustrophobia is a, lot of th is a big fear for a lot of people. And they have different uh, sorts of training where they will put you in an entanglement box where it's a very tight area and you're on air and they black out your mask and you have to crawl through and there's wires. And the biggest thing you need to do is just maintain your composure, be calm, slowly try and get things, you know, untangle your bottle from any of the wires that are hanging or slowly move yourself around and figure out your way through it. But you need to maintain your composure. There was one guy that absolutely lost his mind in the uh, entanglement box and it did not go well for him. That's just part of the training. Whatever your fears are, you need to start facing them now. Before you get into the fire academy, start exposing yourself little by little um, to things that might freak you out, whether it be you know heights, entanglement, anything like that. You will be pushed and you will be expected to continue to do the training. And if you can't do it, you're probably not going to get past. And it should absolutely be that way. One of the most dreaded parts of training is the gas chamber. Crush, 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 crush recruits are exposed to CS gas, more commonly known as tear gas. Once the recruits enter the chamber, they break the seals of their gas masks. You go in, you feel it, instantly hit your skin, you just feel burning. Say something to me now! Feels like those few minutes felt like an hour. Around five minutes, the recruits are free. But the pain endures. Definitely you thank God for fresh air. It's really nice to be able to breathe in and not feel an instant burning sensation. <laughs> Gas chamber is important because it builds confidence. Confidence in the gear, confidence in the drone shutters, and then confidence in themselves. So that's another similarity to the actual fire academy. When I went through, they had us do uh, a, a, they smoked up a room and you did not have your mask on. You didn't have any sort of air on. And what they did is they brought everybody into the room and they lit some wet straw or hay or something like that. And it's just slowly the smoke started to fill the room. And they made you get down lower and lower and lower and lower until you were literally on the ground, breathing on the ground, just because you couldn't breathe if you stood up at all. Now, a lot of people think that that is a bad thing to do. I personally think that's a really good lesson to learn. It's easy to talk about how hard it is to breathe in smoke and how dangerous it is. It's another thing to actually get in there and experience it. And I think that's probably what they're going for when they do the CS gas or, or whatever it is that they make them go through. Um, so that they can experience it so they don't forget that and that was that was a big learning point for me when I was going through the academy of when they made us do that and they smoked up that room I remember how bad it sucked it was awful being in there and your your, your face is literally on the ground just trying to get air um, and it was tough but it really 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 drove home the the point of the importance of 
keeping your mask on at all times in a smoked up or dangerous environment. Recruits are trained in different styles of hand-to-hand -hand combat. First thing we want to see is that straight thrust, you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A key aspect of their martial arts training is fighting with bugle sticks. You killed that opponent, you oh. stick techniques are intended to mirror those used in combat while using a bayonet. Here in the Marine Corps, we have a kind of a little ditty that means red is dead. So that red side is supposed to emulate the actual knife portion of the actual bayonet mounted on the weapon. So anything that you strike with that red tip, nine times or ten are either going to be incapacitated or laid to rest. Honestly, it gives them an opportunity to block a little steam. They have a lot of pent-up aggression, especially towards maybe their drill instructors. They're out there, they're actually doing what they feel like they signed up to do, which is learn how to combat the enemy. Recruits also practice with actual bayonets. And engage in other type. So I would compare all of this to just your basic training of deploying ladders, uh, hose lines. Obviously, in, in a fire academy, you're not going to be fighting with one another, at least hopefully not. You might. I don't know. Things might get tense. Um, but you're... You're generally not going to need to learn hand-to-hand -hand combat. You're not going to need to learn uh, rifle work as a firefighter. Um, you know, they had that guy stabbing those tires. I'm not sure what that was, say, in Marine Corps. But um, I would compare all of this. This is fairly similar in the sense that you're going to be doing training. You're going to be doing extensive training on a variety of different things. Like I said, you're going to be doing ladder work. You're going to be doing truck operations. You're going to be doing engine operations. You're doing pump operations. You're going to be doing... Uh, uh, RIT team drills. You're going to be doing all sorts of different skills that you'll need to know. And it's similar to this. Now, again, they're going to drill those into you pretty hard and it's going to be intense. And there's always in every academy, there's uh, a fight in a, in, a, in a competition to be number one, to be at the top of your class. Uh, firefighting typically draws very uh, type A people and they want to do well and they want to be the best. And so there will usually be a handful of people in the class that are going to do the best they can to stand out. And I would imagine it's probably similar here. Again, like I said, you're not going to be fighting anybody, but you are going to be learning a bunch of different skills that you'll be going over again and again and again. Although male and female recruits do intersect during training, platoons are separated by gender. And although the Recruit Depot has experimented with integration before, the Marine Corps is the only military branch that separates male and female recruits during basic training. Yes, sir! According to the Corps, every Marine is first and foremost a rifleman. So again, I said this earlier, I'm not aware of any fire academy that separates uh, male and female candidates. I can see why they do that in the Marine Corps. Uh, really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, in my opinion, to do that in a fire academy, uh, especially because you're not, you know, you're not living there. Being a firefighter once you leave the fire academy is a very different world than I would imagine being a marine in a combat unit would be. Uh, but that's not something I'm aware of. I've never heard of that. Recruits spend the bulk of two weeks devoted to marksmanship. The first of which sees few shots actually fired. First off is the fundamentals. They have to understand how to aim. They have to understand exactly how to breathe when they're taking that shot. They have to understand exactly how to squeeze the trigger and how to have follow through and recovery with a rifle. Combat operations is the foundation for every single Marine, regardless of what your occupation is. What it is to sit behind a rifle, look down that barrel and be able to put lead on target. So they're spot on about that, and I think this is one place where the Marine Corps really, really shines in their training, is they know what their what their purpose is, and they train relentlessly at that. Like they said, every every Marine is a rifleman first. Uh, firefighters know what their, what their job is, to protect life and property. Um, 
And part of that is is fire ground operations. And you will drill that non-stop. You will do a ton of hose operations. You will do a lot of rescue things, uh, meaning like a RIT team type of stuff. You will go through that again and again and again and again until you get sick of it. You will be reminded a million times that kinks in a hose line can kill people. Uh, so this is very similar. Obviously, you're not going to be shooting rifles in the fire academy, but drilling the things that you know that you're there to do is something you will do relentlessly throughout the fire academy. The Marine Corps is defined as an amphibious warfare force. Therefore, swimming plays a key role in training. If you see another recruit up there and there's more than five, you're going to So you might have an instructor like this guy. This guy sounds pretty awesome. Uh, just very high energy, very fired up. Uh, again, depending on where you go, every, there's a just like there's a range of candidates, there's a range of instructors. You'll find the instructors that are very calm, uh, will speak to you slowly and just kind of walk you through things, almost like they're your buddy or your friend. And then you will find instructors that are like this guy that at the drop of a hat will just absolutely lose his mind. I have no idea what he's yelling about, but uh, it just makes me laugh because I remember there were instructors in my academy, and I'm sure at every academy, they knew who that guy was. During swim week, recruits go through numerous exercises in the pool while wearing their camouflage uniforms. But training at Paris Island isn't all physical. Recruits also spend long hours in the classroom. But what may seem like downtime can end at any moment when a drill instructor decides to order an impromptu cardio session at Paris Island. It's what's known as getting slayed. So in the fire academy, you will have a lot of classroom work and fair warning. Sometimes it does get extremely boring. Obviously, it's all important stuff that you do need to know. Fire behavior. Uh, different types of fire science things, but uh, it can get boring and you can be tired. Do your best to stay awake. If you do fall asleep, I'm sure you are punished for certain things and they'll call you out and make you do PT or whatever these guys are doing here. Um, that's just a part of it. I know some people think that that's wrong. I read an article and I don't, again, I'm not going to go into this other article that it was just ridiculous. It said that they shouldn't do that in police and fire and military academies. Um, but yeah, this is part of it. You will have a lot of academics. So if you think you're going into the fire academy and you're just going to be breaking windows and spraying water, think again. There is a lot of classroom work that comes along with it as well. It's an experience. You realize the thing you've done to get in a sand pit, and then you realize, okay, that hurt, so let's not do that again. Physically, it hurts, but me personally, I never worried about the pain I was feeling in my body. It was more thinking about the mistake I made and how I need to correct it the next time. So there's going to be some chaos, because when they come here, we want to tear them down a little bit, and we want to bring them back up and into the mold of what it is to be a United States Marine. So that's one other thing I wanted to comment on. Um, in the fire academy, at least when I went through, a lot of people think it's wrong to punish people individually for their mistakes. The way they did it is your entire, like I said earlier, they split you into seven. They had a split into seven or eight different platoons or, or groups. You're, if you did something wrong, your entire group was held accountable. And I think that that's good, especially in the firefighting. And I'm, I would imagine it's probably fairly similar in the Marine Corps and the other branches of the military. You will be training as a crew and you as your crew will need to learn to rely on one another in the fire service. And so when somebody does something wrong or messes up, everybody is held accountable. Everybody will pay for it. I think it's really good that they do that that way. Um, again, I can't speak for every fire academy out there, but that was certainly the way it was when I went through. Recruit training culminates in an event known as the crucible over the course of 54 hours with minimal sleep and food recruits must endure realistic combat scenarios the sounds of gunfire and shelling are played over loudspeakers mounted in the training area recruits are forced to work together to overcome obstacles and achieve objectives that require problem solving and strategy. We got to start all over. 
This is what we saw on the second day. The recruits had become exhausted and irritable. Cash is running! Ready! Jump it! Jump away! So that again is something that's very realistic when you are accountable to an entire crew or group of people. If one person isn't pulling their weight or one person is just, you know, the dead weight, the lead of the group, uh, people will get very frustrated and get very mad at that person. And again, I think it's good because it pushes everybody in the same direction at the same pace because when you're in a fire, a fire doesn't care. Fire doesn't care how strong this particular person is or that particular person is. Uh, everybody needs to be able to be held to the exact same standard. You know, you go through a really rough time. You start thinking, man, like, it's hot, I'm thirsty, my arms haven't felt this bad in my whole life. We're halfway there, come on. You just keep looking at the person to the left and right, and you're like, well, he's doing it, I gotta keep going. Uh, like, I'm not gonna let him do it on his own. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So there's no reason not to push. <laughs> Once the crucible is complete, these recruits officially become Marines. The day before graduation, friends and family see their new Marines for the first time in more than three months. So in the Fire Academy, they do something similar. Obviously, they don't do a two-day event generally, but when I went through, the way we did it is the last thing in the fire academy was your live burn so what a lot of uh, academies and departments will do is they will find abandoned houses or or abandoned facilities and what they'll do is they will have the entire academy class come out to whatever for example if it's a house come out to this particular house they'll bring the engines they'll bring all the equipment that they need and they will do a live controlled burn in there and you and your crew will act as though you're the first responding engine and you have to go put out the fire. It's a really exciting time. You're kind of putting together everything that you've learned over the course of the last several weeks, over the course of the entire academy. And you get to actually go in there and fight an actual fire in a in an environment that is not safe. I mean, they, they keep it safe. They have instructors in there to make sure nothing crazy goes off. Um, but it's much more unstructured than the basic drills that you'll be doing throughout the entire of your academy and one usually that's the last thing so that you can kind of put everything together and that's a really cool experience um, especially if you've never been in an actual fire before to go see that and kind of see it up front close and live seen their son or daughter in about three months immediately notice not only a physical but an intangible difference when they walk across that parade deck on train day 70 and they graduate they're no longer recruits they're marines so the fire department does something similar at the end there's an entire you know graduation process your family and your friends are there and it's and it's a lot of fun and it's a cool experience um generally all in all i think there are a lot of similarities between the way that the marine corps trains their marines and the fire department and fire department academies uh train firefighters and i think it's necessary that it is like that and i think it's good that they have similar types of training obviously the point of the marine corps is very different than the point of the fire department but generally speaking the way that they kind of tear people down start from the very beginning and kind of like they said in this video crawl walk run you're going to do something similar when you're in the fire academy you're going to start out as somebody that has no idea what you're doing has no idea what to expect and they're going to teach you the skills and the, the knowledge necessary to keep yourself alive, to keep other people alive, to keep your crew alive 
protect life and property. That's ultimately the point of the fire department. That's ultimately the point of why we're here. So I think it's good that they train them in a similar way. Again, I'll talk about that other article that I talked about at the beginning of this video in another video. I will have it somewhere uh, so that you can see kind of my response to that. But I think this is really good. I think there are a lot of similarities. And as always, if you found this useful and helpful, give this video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video.